Welcome inside Kill Cliff CBD. It's been doing me a world of good. Drink some. All right, welcome to the inside of the uh, 2015 Host Mammoth. I'm gonna tour you around here best I can, show you what we got uh, if you're thinking about buying one or uh, thinking about how to outfit it. Um, and we're just starting. So we, uh, we bought this, we, we did a shake out in Virginia Beach for two weeks, living out of it, getting to know it in, ins and outs, kind of uh, seeing how much water we go through and how much propane, starting to keep some logs. We did a drive across the country. Now we're out here in Moab, been 10 days out here. And this is a, kind of the next level shakeout for us. And then we're, we're looking ahead to Alaska in, in April. We'll start back towards the rear. Initially, when I was checking this out online, I've heard a lot of reviews. A lot of people are like, they said they didn't, they didn't like it because it was a, a smaller sofa. And, and you know, this view that you get with this window is really amazing to make you feel like you're in the outdoors and just be able to enjoy the spaciousness of how big this is. Uh, really, really cool. The reason the sofa can't go any bigger is because of this slide out has to come in. I'm sure most people probably recognize that, but it's worth a mention. This has become like a fan favorite though of people hanging out here, of just sitting it. You got the best view in the house for when you're watching TV and, and taking a look at that. But it is, it is comfy. You could have two big adults. I'm, I'm 5'11", uh, 200 pounds. It's, it's, it's plenty great right there. This does turn into a smaller bed. So these just pop out here, just lift them up, the cushions. So you get some more width, and then you just essentially lift it. Hopefully I'm not embarrassing myself too much. But yeah, just lift it, and it drops flat right that so um, if you have some kids it's a great spot for that if you have some friends that don't care I mean, I'll, I'll lay down on it if you got a pillow you know and you're here kind of crashing out you could do it it's not the best I'm not laid out full but we're camping and it's pretty lavish yeah I'll, I'll take it rather than freezing outside so I think that's a pretty cool cool spot for that And I know Host offers a bunch of different options you can do. Some people um, have a, a washer and dryer if you're a smaller group that don't need as much seating. Underneath what you have here is huge storage. Look at that. That's really amazing. I think they do offer an option where they have like a footrest. I personally wouldn't get that. Some people have had it, said so they'd, they'd rather have the storage. Um, I agree. Then I got another light right here. Then up top, we have, uh, we're just using it for a bunch of knick-knacky type stuff right now. Uh, really adequate storage. One thing we were mentioning about doing is, is doing away with this centerpiece and just having one, one bar. That way, if we did have uh, some Tupperware that we wanted to have, you know, find something that fits really, really nice, just perfect that we can take out and just use for storage instead of having to, to go through for some of the, the bulkier items. So it just kind of restricts your space a bit. Um, that's something we're thinking about. Right here, as you come in, a great spot for, for shoes. Uh, we're still figuring out what exactly we're gonna use it for. Right now, it's become a little bit of a garage. Uh, we did find some Tupperware that's really nice. And here we have uh, a, a printer, we got some printer paper. This we use for getting moisture off the top of the, the toppers or, or get some pine needles and leaves off of that. And then we have a little uh, dust pickup as well. And we've got a bunch of gear. Uh, one thing we've made an investment and got is just a really small, it's this shark vacuum. And it works really great for just small. We actually had the Tony Sacheries explode on us and had just a bunch of it everywhere. This picked it up super quick. So just for little messes here and there, just try to keep this place as clean as we could uh, with minimal storage as well. We kind of like that, that was cool. We also have a medical kit back there that's quick to get to. And talking about quick to get to, this area right here is where we're going to mount our fire extinguisher. I'll show it to you. It's underneath the kitchen right now, underneath the kitchen sink. 
but I wanted something that was really accessible from inside or outside the camper and visible to everyone. So we have it currently right here. And I installed these, uh, got it from Home Depot. It's this as seen on TV lights. It was a little dark underneath. So I did it when you open it up. We got this, uh, these little LED lights right there. So that was really cool. Welcome to underneath. We have just some cleaners and cleansers, basic stuff that you need, scrub brushes. We opted with a $2 Home Depot can, works great as a trash can. Uh, we can also use double duty if we want to put fish in there or, or carry dirt for a fire or, or whatever you want to use. You got just a, a handy bucket. And then in the back here is where we have, we got some, we got some rags, we got extra sponges, got some garbage bags. Here's our fire extinguisher right there. Again, we're gonna relocate that. Extra storage, tons in the back. We're using paper towels right there. And then you have your hot water heater. So that's the under the sink. Really pleased overall with the amount of storage that, that this has. All right, moving on. We have a, a couple outlets right here. And then you have a cigarette lighter. A, a power adapter and here we have for uh, electric or, or gas for the water heater uh, double sink it works out pretty good tip on the sink whatever you're using because you will have a lot of stuff when you get to driving take it put it in the sink we've already had some big spills with this where it's just we had left it up it spilled out even though it's capped out it's going everywhere we found apples in the back and all that. So, you know, we're using this a lot. We're in and out at, at rest stops, hopping here and there. You just gotta make sure everything is contained because it will roll around back here. Double storage, really nice, adequate storage. We've been using this, we have a lot of, you know, we've got a French press and, and, and plates and bowls and uh, mixers and, and all that. So that works out well, a lot of space right here. Microwave, not the hugest in the world but it's been adequate for what we need. It, it takes really large paper plates, rotates them around just fine. So we've had zero issues with this, been very pleased. You have your, your cooktop. One thing I really like about this opposed to other campers is the angle that it gives you where you get a lot of extra space because we really use this space a lot. The cooktop could be used here and then this pops up used as a backsplash a little bit and you have a three burner gas stove, which is really cool. Two different drawers. I believe in some options, this could be an oven. Uh, the option we have here does, obviously doesn't have it. Very deep storage, not the best organization that we have right here, but we have our, our pots and pans some Ziploc bags, all kinds of kind of kitchen accoutrements right there. Works really great. When you're in travel mode, these just, that just locks down in place so it doesn't slide out on its own, just like that. Top drawer. Uh, we have a little bit of everything in here. Underneath, right there, is this will drop in for the top of the cooktop, or excuse me, top of the sink. Uh, so you can use it as a, a cutting board or just extra counter space if you need. On the subject of counter space, uh, some of the newer models that we've seen, what it does is takes this uh, you know, book or computer storage area and it allows you to pop up and have an island right here. So we might look at uh, doing that option. Um, and that's been pretty cool. For the fridge, I am not sure how many cubic feet it is. I want to say it's maybe eight. So decent sized freezer and, and fridge. Yeah, we haven't any issues with it and it's been working out really, really well. It'll run off the propane or electric depending on how you're, you're set up. A couple drawers back here, currently using it for we're living out of here, so for clothing, out of here. And this has been, uh, you know, just other, more clothes, and they're, they're pretty deep drawers. So you can see it extends pretty far out. So those work nice. Uh, I've been doing that where I, I wake up and kind of stand here and get, get dressed and get set up. One thing I will say about the cabinets, again, you can see this one doesn't close all the way. And if you could take a look at this, 
is just starting to nick that right there. So this needs some adjusting. And one of the other cabinets is like that too, just a little bit off. Welcome to the pantry. Really nice, impressed with it. Four very large doors with tons of room for storage. Uh, <laughs> and there's some peaches. Tons of room for storage right here. So you can see all that. It's about 10 inches deep, I'd say. So you're not hurting for storage in this thing, which is really cool. Then we have the, the living quarters back here. This model, we have a, a queen size bed and it has storage space on either side, which goes back, it's pretty deep. I'll crawl back here and open it up. It's working out pretty good and there's tons of space in the rear as well. And we also have these uh, motion detector lights, uh, enough light on here that's not popping on right now. So it's kind of nice, you open up the door, the light comes on. You also have some lights here. I may look at different options where we just open this up a bit to make it a little bit more accessible instead of having to dig in there. So great feature here, sunroof opens up. A couple different features, you can do this for your shade and just close it down. Or if you wanted more ventilation, you can just uh, you, you pop this open and then you can use this part here and have a bug screen, which is cool. Now the retraction, I don't know if it's a host thing or because they're you know, five years old, which shouldn't be too old, but it takes a, it's a little tricky. You just have to, it doesn't spring back quite as quick as I'd like, but it's sufficient. Uh, we also have speakers back here and there's also a 32 inch TV which is kind of cool, we haven't used it. And yeah, nice space here. We've seen people have uh, dogs off along the side. Typically, who's ever bedding here, you know, they'll have some extra bags, their backpacks and all that, and they're set up. So this is a really large space, and there's outlets too up there. So that's the living quarters. One nice option with that floor plan that we have is there's windows on either side, really nice for a cross breeze. You can open it up and, and the, the breeze just comes on through. Here we are in the uh, bathroom. So you got your toilet there. What I really liked with this option, this bigger, bigger shower, was a space where we have the shower is a standalone on this side and then you have the bathroom there. So you can be in kind of standing and having a, a lot of space to work. There's a Velcro flap right here, which is really important. We left it open on one of the trips, we forgot to secure it and we cracked the top of the door. So uh, I might look at some wood glue or see if we can replace that. So unfortunately that was a lesson learned for us. So you undo that, this slides forward and then you can secure it if you want right here with that same Velcro. And then here's your shower. So it's a decent sized shower. Uh, we installed these 3M or Rubbermaid, whatever brand, hooks. Uh, we use them for the showers uh, and for the loofahs and all that. I'm, again, 5'11", 200 pounds, plenty of space. Uh, and what it has for when you're taking the shower, this is kind of cool. This just slides right here and closes. It works out pretty good. I, I will tell you, I've been watching it. There's been a fair amount of water uh, leakage that, that comes out from the, the bottom. I think it somehow like the water's trickling through. I'm not sure if it's coming out through our, our vent. We're gonna keep an eye on that. I mean, it's not a terrible amount, but when we get out, this will be, will be wet to the point where we're taking some paper towels. Uh, water pressure works real great. I um, haven't had any issues with that. And uh, <clears throat> open this up, get some more light in here. Oh, there's a fan up top, which works nice. Just push button fan uh, to help dry everything out. Again, with the research, you want to keep this as dry as possible. You keep moisture in here, you'll get some mold and mildew and you don't want that. Double vanities, a lot of space in here. So here's a, a lesson learned. We've had some spills again. Don't forget, don't keep your soaps out and all that when you're traveling. So we have a bunch of stuff here. I've been packing it in so it doesn't want to shift and spill over and have caps break. 
we had the, you know, some of the shower gel stuff opened up and just made a mess. You know, so we're just figuring out how to use that. And tips and tricks, you know, Ziploc bags and all that. Uh, what we've been using for towels in here, we saw this. These are these uh, just really small, lightweight towels. They open up and they're a really large space for coverage, uh, but they, they dry super quick and they're not as heavy or bulky. And again, it helps reduce the moisture that we have. So that's what we use for that. RV style toilet paper, of course. And underneath the sink, and so good amount of storage space for whatever you need to use for your, your shower kits. Back here is a, a good amount of storage. We're using it for just a ton of paper towels. We've also been putting laundry detergent in there. We've got some cleaners in here. And uh, here's your toilet paper roll. There is a, a double power outlet right back here, which is cool. That's the bathroom and works out real well. Circling back around, here's our uh, dinette. So main, main uh, seating area. The table can be configured two different ways. Right now we have it pushed out or you can have it where when you're sitting, it would just sit a little bit further in. You can still close the slide either way with that, uh, works out real well. And then this converts, it's I think exactly six feet. And this converts and we've, we've spent plenty of nights sleeping in this. The way I'm not gonna fully do it, but these, these cushions just pop out right here. And then this, when, when the table gets removed, this part drops in and then you lay down. A tip I've learned is, and what you, you have this part right here, this slides up. Uh, you can see these, these metal stanchions. It just slides in and creates the, the weight bearing platform for that, that cushion. When the, when the cushions are connected, these two, because this is kind of where your butt goes when you're laying down, it ends up cook, kicking the cushion out. So we put, we just swap this one in the center so your weight gets dispersed real evenly. It's just a lot more comfortable and it only takes two seconds to do. So, On the newer models, I've seen Host has gotten away from the dinette style in favor of a, it's more of a sofa style, much like this one that's just like a jackknife that folds flat. And I could see that could be kind of convenient. So right now there's not a lot going on here. It's, it's pretty empty. When you do have this in a bed mode, all these cushions kind of add up and you, you're like, just not, don't know where to put them. You know, so um, we figured out different spots. The table, we, we tend to put just right here and it fits just fine. And then you just kind of figure a spot for these things as you need to. And underneath here, there's a, uh, we have double power as well, not hurting for power in this thing. And then you have more storage and this drops out to your, is it the gray water tank? One of the tanks. Um, so you have some, some access for maintenance if you need to. Then there's more storage right here. Currently using them for some paper towels, but it's pretty big storage drawer. And then these vents here are for your furnace and the furnace works real well. Coming to the, the center, we have, here's your main control panel. This uh, remote switch is for an inverter. Not sure how many watts we have on it right now. I've, I've seen people have done some upgrades to put a better quality one in there that's bigger. What it enables you to do is just run some of the outlets when the generator's not running. This is your kind of control center to let you know how many uh, where you're sitting with your, your gray tank, black tank, fresh, and, and where your battery is. For your porch lights are there. Uh, the awning, I, I kind of wish the awning switch was down at the control panel at the steps. I think it'd be a little bit more convenient so you can, you can watch it and see it a little bit better. Uh, then we have uh, the generator set up right here. And then in here is all your, your breakers. So everything's pretty accessible. I believe there is a, a, a door judging from these, these screws right here that would just hinge up. I think it's more decorative. Previous owner, I think, uh, deleted it and I'm not terribly upset about it. It's just right there open, easy access instead of just having one more chore to do. 
double power outlets here. We upgraded, we just got this TV. We're really excited about it. Super slim profile. It's a 32 inch Samsung Q50, I believe. It's a ultra high def 4K TV. As we're traveling, making these videos and, and piping up a lot of stuff, we wanted our, our video folks that live in here with us to, to have the best. And this enables them to do it for, for cutting videos and, and taking a look at it. So we have our HDMI cables all set up. Hey, I just found <laughs> we've been we've been looking for this for a long time <laughs> and there it is all right we needed that that's cool it's for uh for a uh, uh, storage drive so uh good quality hdmi cable this is for your 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 fan uh, up top right here right is your your ac so you can run just the fan you can run the ac and then you can also control the furnace from here one thing I've noticed, and please put in the comments if anybody does know, when I'm running this, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it right here to show you. So once you fire it up, some people typically are doing it to charge their cords, and they're always waiting. You gotta wait just a second, and a few seconds here, we should hear a beep. And we'll hear everything kind of kick in. That's when everything will come to life. Five, four, three, two, one. So maybe a little bit longer. There it goes. <laughs> All right, cool. What I wanted to show y'all with our, our furnace, uh, and again, people who know more than me, please let us know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on the furnace. And what happens is when I put the furnace selection on, the AC kicks on as well. So here we're just on the fan, okay? Here, AC, I'll wait a second, let it fire up. All right, so that's not firing up right now. All right, well, let me try the next selection. Okay, so not sure why the AC wasn't coming on there for a second. It typically always did. Of course, it won't when we're on camera. So we just turned on the furnace, but look above, it's also running the AC, okay? But when I come down here, there's hot air coming out. So what the previous owner told me to do was the third one down, AC fireplace, right here. I do that, it stops the AC, but then the furnace is still running. So I'm not sure what's up, if that's a host thing, if there's some type of weird wiring in here. It doesn't look like there's any modifications made in this, but I am curious about that. Then I'll show you the, that'll turn off in a second. So here's the fireplace. Boom, kind of cool, right? So you can have it for uh, actual heater, for an electric, electric heater. You can already feel it kicking, huh? So you can choose how much heat you want, or if you want no heat at all, you can choose the, uh, the you know, the, the flame, no flame, a lot of flame, your ember level and the, the backlight, um, just kind of cool. And, and I have used this a lot for the electric heater portion and, and really enjoyed it. So it's a nice feature to have. And then here's the control panel. Be honest with you, we really haven't used it too much. Uh, this is for your, you know, uh, the stereo and, and all that. Uh, one cool mention I do want to add about the, the, the TV is we have the ability to do the mirroring from people's computers and phones so everybody doesn't have to hook up cables. So if we're sitting around at the end of the day and we want to share photos of what we saw, it's easy for everybody to just throw it up there and, and, and take a look. And right here, this is for the, uh, uh, if, you, if you want to watch TV, you just crank this sucker up and it helps you with the TV antenna. We do have a omnidirectional a, a better quality one that we might replace and put up here. Your lights, all just a push button. If you go one way, it does a single. If you don't want as much light, the other way hits a dual, all LED, so it's a low battery drain. And then there's a, a fan back here, which has the ability to turn on auto, if it's gonna happen right here. Uh, maybe I have to have the power on. Well, there we go. Okay. Yeah, you just open it up and it'll just turn on right away 
which is cool. Uh, making a little bit of noise, we got a leaf stuck in there <laughs> from the East Coast. So I think that completes our interior tour. Hope you've enjoyed it. This is the Host Mammoth. This is a 2015 model. This is our base camp for military mobility. We do off-road expeditions for veterans. Come check us out, like us, follow us on, on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.